Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to give a demonstration on how, on how you can automate importing CSV files into Microsoft Excel. Now this topic can be pretty lengthy, so I'm going to try to keep it as minimal and as brief as possible. So I have already done a lot of the legwork for this application. So to begin, I already have three files set up, CSV, located in my root directory, Alex, and then data feed load. Additionally, I've already created an admin tab where I have the files that I want to pull. Now in this case you want to list out the files that you're going to want to be pulling and just so we can make sure that you're actually watching the, the video that you want in this case importing CSV files let me show you what this application is going to do that way we can see if this video is right for you. I'm going to go to my data feeds tab and I'm going to run my macro minus import all files. All I want this macro to do is load up these three files into my workbook. So I'm going to go ahead and run that file so you can see it in action. It's a pretty quick task. And all my macro did was it stored these three files to my data feeds tab based on the row number that I gave it to output to. So we have one of the files starting in A1 one of them starting in A10,000 and the other one starting in A20,000. So to give the demonstration, if I go to A10,000, we'll see that there's one another import right here. And if we go to A20,000, we'll see this is where the other import is. So this is what you're looking for, then you've come across the right video so you can get a demonstration on how to achieve this. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is create an admin tab such as the one I've done right here. List out the files that you want imported and also list the output um, sheet name that you want it to go to. In this case, my sheet name is data feeds, which is what the name is right here, and then the row number. I'm going to show you the code that it took to import all three of those files. The code that you're going to want to pay most attention to is this specific portion. This was done though by the VBA recorder. And I'm going to show you how you can how you can get that code pretty quickly. I'm going to create a new sheet real quick. I'm just going to call it testing. I'm going to go to record macro in my developer tab and I'm going to type call this import one file. So it's recording right now. We're going to go to data from text. We're going to import this file. I'm going to, mine is a delimited file. It's, it's tab delimited, so I'm going to go and hit next and then finish. You want to select your output range. Mine's going to be A1 and select OK. And then now I'm going to start recording. So now I'm going to go to my macros and do import one file, which is the macro I just created. And the macro recorder was nice enough to create this wonderful piece of code for us that saves a lot of time. I can tell you for the most part, you want to keep everything the same. And I don't want to give a lot of instruction here because your file is going to be different than the file that I chose, the kind of CSV file that I chose. But based on your file, I mean, you're welcome to tweak with these settings. With the CSV file that I used, I know I can get rid of this attribute. I can get rid of these, this value. We don't need the name. Everything else here, I'm going to keep the same. The one string I'm going to want to work with and modify is this piece right here. This section tells us what file we're going to be loading and then our destination. Where do we want it to, to populate? So once you have your code, what you want to do is create another macro. And you can actually do it from here. At the very end of this code, after n sub, just type in sub and then the name of your procedure. In this case, you can call it, we're going to call it test underscore import all files then just do an open parentheses close parentheses and hit enter the moment you do that if you did it correctly you should get an n sub that was populated and you want to copy this code over and place it in here 
Now, for the sake of this video, I am going to go ahead and go to my other module where I had already worked on this code. This is pretty much what the macro recorder created, but I modified it a little bit. Because this video can be very lengthy if we go step by step on how we wrote this code, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this code right here instead of recreating it again. And I'm going to show you what we did. I put four rep is equal to four to six. If you're not familiar with a four statement, all it is, is is a loop that goes from one range or one number and it counts up. And I'm going to show you why I did that. On my admin tab, my information starts at row number four and then it ends at six. However, if I had three more files here, I would want to go from four to nine. So I'm just going to kind of expand this down. My four rep would change to be four rep is equal to four to nine. In other words, it's going to be reading each row starting at row number four, going down to nine. And we have to close out that for statement. Now, you can ignore this for right now if let me just show you and get started with the code as mentioned when i did the the macro recorder i explained that the main line that we're going to be working with and changing is the connection and that's this string right here what you want to do is modify your code so that you can assign some variables and make your life a little bit easier. That way you have your files listed out on your workbook rather than, than your source code. Because if you leave your file name in here, you're going to have to be going back to the, to the VBA code anytime you want to make changes to your file name. That to me can be a little bit time consuming. I would much rather go to an admin page where I can easily change the files if I'd like. And then I don't have to go back and change the VBA code. So that's what this does right here. I set this up so that we're looking at the file name variable that I create up here. So I have three variables and I'll explain what those variables are. Before I write those variables though, I have to declare what how the data is going to be stored. In this case, I put dim file name as string, row number as string, and output sheet as string. The file name is equal to sheets admin, the admin sheet, range B. So it's already looking at column B, but and rep, which is the row number. In this case, it starts at four because it's a four statement and it's going to loop. It's going to, the rep will be four and then five and then six. Since this will be the first time that the rep is executed, it will be four. So this is looking at B4. B4 is the file name, which will be right here. Then we have the output sheet, that's C4. And then lastly, the row number, D, and then rep again is four. All this is is storing that information as variables. File name is gonna be placed right here. Output sheet is listed over here. And then the row number listed right here. We always store the data starting at column A. We do not change this. We keep that as a static value. All of this code right here is going to import all of your CSV file or whatever file you are using. That's all it does. However, there's one disadvantage here. If you notice, it's querytables.add. The moment you run this code, in your Excel workbook, you're going to build up a lot of connections and they'll all be listed in, in your workbook connections. This list will grow and grow and grow as you continue to use this code. I don't like my workbooks getting messy. I try to keep them as clean as possible. So what I do, once the data is imported, I delete the connection. 
So this portion, I will discuss this in another video. I won't get too into detail with it. But all this does, it loops through every workbook connection that's in our workbook. If the name of the connection includes a, the file name, then it deletes it. This way, once this is completed, it's going to create a connection. This piece is going to delete it. This code is entirely optional. You can actually keep your code as is and not have this portion. However, I do this because I want my workbook connection list to be empty. And then we have the next rep. The message box done, that's not necessary. This is just notifying the user that actions have been completed. But this is pretty much all the code that, you, that you'll need. It's all listed out in front of your screen. I'm gonna just kind of delete here. And then of course, lastly, message box done. That is pretty much all it takes to automate importing CSV files. All the code that you need is listed right here in front of you. This portion, again, you wanna use your VBA macro recorder to populate this code. Don't make any changes to it with the exception of your connection. You wanna change it out to the, the variables that I use right here and make sure you put your variables in your code. If you're unable to read this code, make sure you're watching the video in 720p. Anything less than that, you won't be able to see this code properly on your screen. That now concludes this video. You should be able to import all of your CSV files in a much faster fashion. If you have any questions, feel free to post. Thank you for watching.